It is Wednesday, the 10th of August, and this is Love Notes, daily devotions from Holy Trinity Lutheran Church. Welcome. Our psalm for today is number 138, a psalm of thanksgiving. The psalmist here is in a posture of gratitude, lifted hands to God, thanking God for hearing the psalmist's prayers. I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. In other places in the Psalms, my whole heart has been rendered my soul, which is to mean our being, the very depth of everything we are, our authentic selves, who we truly are. I give you thanks, O Lord, with everything that I have, we could say. Before the gods, I sing your praise. In other words, before any power or pretender in the world, I will sing your praise and not theirs. I bow down toward your temple and give thanks to your name for your steadfast love and your faithfulness. Worship arises out of gratitude, out of memory for the things that God has done. It says, for you have exalted your name and your word above everything else. In verse 3, the psalm, psalmist turns attention to what he's giving thanks for. It says, on the day I called, you answered me. You increased my strength of soul. Whatever the prayer concern was, God delivered. Presence, peace, grace, mercy, whatever it was that was needed in that moment, it was received by the one who prays. And so therefore, the psalmist says, all the kings of the earth shall praise you, O Lord, for they have heard the words of your mouth. They shall sing the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. And what is that way? Maybe a clue here to what the psalmist prayed for to begin with. Verse 6 says, For though the Lord is high, he regards the lowly, but the haughty he perceives from far away. It's a sense of reversal that those who are lifted up will be sent away, and those who are low will be lifted up. Uh, Mary sings of this in her Magnificat in Luke's Gospel, that the poor will be fed and the rich will be sent away empty. This is the balancing of the scales of justice. It's not a win and lose situation. It is a promise that at some point, God's will that all of life be just and that there be no oppressed will come to pass. Because the psalmist has had prayers answered, the psalmist can say with assurance, with faith, with absolute trust, something similar to what we hear in the 23rd Psalm. At verse 7, it says, Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve me against the wrath of my enemies. You stretch out your hand and your right hand delivers me. You've done it before and I know you will do it again. For we as Christians, we can always have the touchstone of the resurrection of Jesus to remind us that God is busily working to redeem us and lift us up from the darkness. Verse 8 ends with a reminder that God is one who fulfills promises. The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Your steadfast love, O Lord, endures forever. Uh, remember hearing that earlier this week? Do not forsake the work of your hands. In other words, don't turn your back on the creation that you've made, including me. This is a, a confession of faith, of trust in God. Faith and belief often in our world is seen as some kind of knowledge or assent that we have to make or possess. Uh, but in fact, the biblical witness is that faith is trust. Trust that God has acted in the past and God will continue to act and that God's steadfast love is the guiding principle of all that is divine. Let us pray. Compassionate God, you look with favor upon the lowly. Keep us safe in the midst of trouble. Make known your love in our words and deeds and bring us to new life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.